Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you survived Christmas. We may be the only survivors of Christmas, which is why there are fewer of us. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Christmas tide to Dorset Church. And I want to add my my welcome to the wonderful musical one that Tom always gives us. But the best welcome of all, isn't it the one that we can give each other as brothers and sisters in Christ? So as safely and as comfortably as we may, let's pass on the love and peace of the Lord this morning. Good morning and peace. Peace be with you. Let me add a few announcements to the good cheer this morning. First of all, uh, we have been celebrating the beautiful poinsettias over the last handful of weeks, and uh, we hope that you will deepen your appreciation of them by seeing the list of donors and the wonderful dedications that uh, go along with them. When do they pick them up? You can start taking them home if you wish. Uh, we want to thank our worship technician this morning, Fiona Honan, uh, who is such a dedicated helper, one of the angels in the heavens, as we say. Want to thank in advance our acolyte and beetle this morning, Gray and Weston Campbell. Um, as far as we know, and if things go accordingly, uh, we will be having the college kids pizza party right after church next Sunday. Uh, masks and vaccinations required. And uh, it will be held right across uh, through the hedgerow and at the manse. Uh, the Faith Inside book study will begin a week later than normal, perhaps. Uh, it'll start on Friday, January 14th at 9.30 in the morning and go through the entire winter season every Friday morning. Uh, on New Year's Eve day, the 31st, the church office will be closed, but will be reopening promptly at 8.30 on January 3rd. So January is traditionally Dorset Church's uh, responsibility for the food cupboard in Manchester. So when you're doing your grocery shopping, think of our congregation's obligation to help keep those, uh, those shelves well stocked. The uh, New Year weekly envelopes are... Uh, are coming up soon. If you haven't signed for envelopes, you can call the, uh, the office to have one allocated to you. Uh, coming up is uh, the opportunity to give flowers over the course of the year's worth of Sundays and the sign-up sheet for flowers starting in 2022 is available 
Um, you can sign up at the office is probably the, the most expeditious thing to do. Uh, the cabinet voted at their last meeting to have our annual meeting this year uh, considerably later than normal, so it will be held on March 6th, 2022, which means that we have a little bit more grace, yours truly especially, to write, to write the, uh, our annual reports, and they are due February 14th. Are there any other announcements this morning for the good of the body? Well, if not, let us unite our hearts, our minds, and our souls on this first Sunday of Christmas tide as we worship God. Gray and Weston, help us begin, laddies. Just the one you want? Okay. Now ring the bell. Right here. This may be the hardest thing we do all morning. Dear friends, let's call one another to worship this day. Wonder of wonders, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. Wonder of wonders, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Wonder of wonders, calf and lion together shall be led by a little child. Wonder of wonders, the nursing baby Wonder of wonders, the Messiah shall judge for the world's poor, for the meek, the lowly, and the little of this earth. Wonder beyond wonders, grace upon grace, joy of our heart of joy. Friends, let us bask in the wonder of Christmas. Let us worship God and sing our opening hymn, 165. Once in Royal David City. Once in Royal David City 
Good morning. morning. Now is a time for us to come together to share our unison prayer of confession. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. O God God of creative love, your Your spirit spirit fills the universe with life. We know that the birth of Christ means great changes for our world. Yet we confess that change is difficult. Many times we rebel at change and think it faithful to remain the same. We fight to hold on to the status quo, whereas you thrust change upon us as abruptly and thoroughly as a newborn demands. Help us to give in to change with the love of a Mary and the trust of a Joseph. Then we too shall see new life grow in our midst. Amen. And now let us each take a moment for our own silent confession. Our God is a forgiving God. Please join me in that unison assurance of God's forgiveness. Even in the mixture of our best desires, our worst stubbornness, God is always with us, gathering us in, comforting our wounds, gently nurturing us to new possibilities. Let us give in to the power of God's love, This is God's promise through Jesus, our Lord. And now I ask Weston to come up and help me. Oh, great. Sorry. Okay, so you want to come up too? Oh, he doesn't want to. Okay, one at a time. Let's begin together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, won't you kindly be seated? So I want to point your attention to the history behind this morning's service of the lessons and carols as it comes to us from uh, England starting in 1928 and when we were living in Great Britain, we fell in love with it and brought it back to the States. And certainly not because of us, but because of many others who loved it too. It has become a tradition in many places around the world. But I wanted to give a little bit of a, of a framework of understanding about these lessons and carols. Probably two of the most boring passages in the entire Bible are the renowned begats. Begat is uh, from the King James Version, and it is the word for uh, fathered, birthed as one's father. And it goes something like this, Abijah begat Asaph, Asaph begat Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begot Joram, Joram begot Uzziah, 
And it goes all the way on for this for a good five minutes ending with Jesus. There are two long lists of begats in the Bible. Both of them end with Jesus, one in Matthew and one in Luke. But interestingly, each of those start in a different way. Matthew's list starts with Abraham, the father of Judaism. Luke's gospel starts with Adam, or Adam, which is the Hebrew word for all humanity. And with those differences, there are different messages to be gleaned. Today's service, the lessons of carols and carols, reflects Luke's perspective. Because the verse lesson that I'm about to read is the story of Adam. And as we all know, that story didn't end very well. But the Adam story is joined to the Jesus story. And the Jesus story doesn't end at all. Resurrection is eternal. Now the Apostle Paul touts Jesus as the second Adam. He says the first Adam was a being of flesh and earth. But Jesus Jesus is a being of spirit and of heaven. Throughout the four Gospels, Jesus calls himself Son of Man more than 100 times. And it's important to know that in that Greek term, Son of Man, the Hebrew translation for it is Ben Adam. What are we to glean from this? Where does this lead us? Well, it teaches me to see Jesus as the way to become a highly evolved person, to become the higher creature, the best version of ourselves to grow as our creator hoped we could grow. And the pathway for this growth and becoming is the life of Jesus. Jesus shows us the direction of how to evolve as spiritual creatures on earth. As we listen to the lessons this morning, and as we sing their supportive carols, the key question for us to ask about ourselves and of all humanity is this, how well are we evolving? Lesson number one, from Genesis chapter three, beginning at verse eight. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, to Adam, and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Adam said, the woman whom you gave with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. 
And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you not to eat, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. And by the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust and to dust you shall return. Shall we sing our accompanying carol, number 104, verses 1 and 3, of our Father's love begotten. We can remain seated. Come to the reading of the second lesson, Genesis 22, verses 15 through 18. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. And this, the context is the, sac the near sacrifice of Abraham's son Isaac, uh, but that was commanded to be stopped by the angel, and a ram whose horns were caught in the thicket was sacrificed instead. And now we turn to our carol. A low how a rose air blooming, number one six zero one six zero.
Lesson 3 from Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And now please join me in our carol, number 150, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, verses 1 and 3. Lesson 4 from Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 4a and 6. The Peaceable Kingdom. A shoot shall come out of the, from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what he see, his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Please join me now in our next carol, number 711. O day of peace that dimly shines.
We come now to our time of a prayer for pastoral care. And I begin today by being told by my wife that she had heard that Bishop Desmond Tutu died this morning. And we think of all that <clears throat> Bishop Desmond Tutu meant both to South Africa but to the whole world in so many ways. And let us begin our prayer together. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh God, you who work through people that you call, the people that you call in their spirits and in their life purpose to serve you. And we thank you especially on this day for the life and witness and ministry of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who died today. We thank you for his life, for all that he meant to the people among whom he lived, and we thank you for his leadership in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which followed the evils and deaths and great suffering of many years of apartheid in South Africa. We thank you, O oh God, that people around the world help stand up to that evil division of people by color. We thank you, O oh God, that it, ways could be found with Desmond Tutu's leadership of reaching out to former enemies, to those who opposed one another, and to help them come together in ways of reconciliation, ways of forgiveness, and yet not apart from telling the truth. As we thank you for Bishop Tutu's leadership, we thank you for all in civil rights who have helped us remember, O oh God, that you are the God of all of us in our diversity in our backgrounds and in the ways in which we can serve you. And so we pray for the memory of, of Gandhi who led the people nonviolently to independence in India, for the ways of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King in our own country, and all the evidence of civil rights leadership through and including John Lewis and his efforts for the rights for everyone to vote. We pray, O oh God, that we may continue their leadership in honoring people of all races, of all tribes and backgrounds, that we may, as people here gathered, continue the efforts of standing up for the rights of everyone. We thank you for hearing our prayers, O oh God, and we thank you for, as we would pray for all leaders of nations, including our own. We pray for the people of the Ukraine, of Afghanistan, the people of Myanmar, and all places of conflict. Our prayers are with all peacemakers in our world, O oh God, and be amongst the leaders of all nations that violence may be tempered and kept to a minimum, and that we may find the ways of nurturing peace amongst ourselves and each other. We pray, O oh God, for the church in its worldwide framework, for its diversity, and for its unity of spirit dwelling upon your gift of your son, Jesus. We pray that the church may thrive in ways that, though small, may reach into people's hearts, that and as it grows larger, may not forget 
its dedication to your purpose, O God, on our earth. And as we think of all the peoples of our earth, O God, we would remember all people who suffer, particularly those who suffer pain. Be with them, we pray. And we pray for all people who face addictions of any kind. May they be helped to know that they are not alone, that none of us are alone. And so our prayers are with the lonely in this hour, with all who face sickness, death, and dying, and for all who minister to them. We pray for all frontline workers and work, all who work in hospitals, in prisons, and amongst all people in nursing homes. We thank you, O oh God, that we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses amongst your servants. May we join them in what we can do each day and this day. And we lift up to you now, O oh God, those on this church's prayer list. Our prayers are with the Reverend Marion and Bruce McCart, with Emily and Matthew Hill, with Anne Healy, with Stephanie and Stephen Blake, with Angie Bell, with Ken and Carol Shippey. We pray for Carrie Ansell and Bob West, for Tony Ann Pearsall and Jean. Our prayers are with Sophia and Bentley Lewis and Deb Sharp and Posey and John Beer. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for Linda Sargent and Hazel Prouty, for Diane and Chip Wilson, for Gary Wilkins, for Jerry Schaefer, for Jack DeBrot. We pray for Mary Carl and Teresa Lassell and Phoebe Savoy. We pray for Rose Ferrara and Debbie Henke. We pray for Dottie Streeter and the brother of the Reverend Mary Woodman, the reason that she is not with us this morning. And we pray for the Reverend Ray and Sue Medeiros and Mary Sandra Senecal and Frank Rawlinson, and Linda Drunsick. Be with Henry Croft, and Martha Drosiak, and Dan Pinsano, with Gary Dufour, and Sharon Stone. And our prayers are with all those friends and family and fellow followers of Bishop Desmond Tutu, and with Marilyn Marcy, who died yesterday, with her friends and family. And in the Dorset Church, our prayers are for the video and sound team that makes it possible for us to hear and record our service and send it out to the greater neighborhood. And in the Vermont Conference, our prayers are for the United Church of Benson and its leadership and people. And in the United Church of Christ, we pray for all the clergy and lay personnel in our national office in Cleveland, Ohio, and for all the ministries and for all the missionaries serving our global village. O oh God, you give us comfort in loss you give us strength in times of despair. You give us encouragement and hope in each new day. May we know your presence in all times and seasons. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Yeah. 
come to the time for the offering, we're reminded that offering plates are at the entrance and exit of the sanctuary. We invite you to participate both in our support for the ministry and mission and outreach of this congregation and also the opportunity to also continue with the support of the Christmas fund for all lay workers and clergy and widows and widowers who have retired uh, with very small pensions in the past. And so we are reminded to present with joy our offerings of commitment and support for the work of Christ's church. I invite us all to stand and sing the doxology. us pray. O wondrous creator, you provide for our strength and gladness through the privilege of human creativity and labor. And you supply all that is needful to bring forth the food from the earth and the supply of your spirit, especially in this time of the birth of your child, Jesus. And so with grateful hearts, we offer to you ourselves and the signs of our work that you may use them to glorify your name in us and in all creation. Amen. You may be seated. And in the lessons and carols, we turn now to our Christmas story and the birth of Jesus foretold from Luke chapter 1, verses 26, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, 
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Let us join in singing verses 1 and 3 of joy to the world, and for this I would invite us to stand. Joy to the world. 143. Lesson six is the birth of Jesus from Luke one and three to seven. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Our carol is away in the manger, in a manger, 147. Let us remain seated.
Lesson 7 is a reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16, The Shepherd and the Angels. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place for which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Hymn 155, angels we have heard on high, verses one, two, and three. Lesson 8, from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, The Visit of the Wise Men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Her Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them 
where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had learned, when they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering this house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Please join me now in our hymn, We Three Kings, verse 1 and 2, number 172. So we come to the last lesson of this service as I read from the gospel according to John chapter 1 beginning at verse 1, the famous explanation for incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone and was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. 
He came to those who were his own, his own people, but they did not accept him. But to all who received him, who all believe in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of humanity, but of the will of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and full of truth. Shall we stand and sing our closing hymn, number 148, verses 1, 2, and 4 of O Come All Ye Faithful. May the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us this day and forevermore. Amen.